Hello guys, welcome back to the Forensics Detailing or Unplugged channel. Please do not forget to hit subscribe, we're a detailing channel. We do loads of stuff on detailing. <laughs> but I had to get a video on this one. How to remove snapped off bolts that are in your, in your stuck in your brake hub, you know, the brake disc. Um, so these bolts probably been over torqued and one of them snapped straight away. It was the locking nut and I tried to undo it. Okay guys. The good good news is I've managed to get this out and it was in there tight using cheap Chinese Mickey Mouse plastic <laughs> rubber <laughs> drill bits. I broke a couple of the two size drill bits. So what you need to do guys is just, I've used the, the flex drill, which is a tiny lightweight drill, which isn't particularly powerful, although it's done the job. Um, start with the smaller bits a three millimeter bit that could take the hammering and just drill a tiny little pilot hole as center to the hole as you can i was slightly off center it was just a, the way it snapped was really weird so i got it central as i can then after that i moved up to a five millimeter i believe it might be in the four mil i think it's the five mil because yeah that four mil feels razor sharp the five mil and just went away at it. Um, as soon as the five mil went in, I could start to see more of the bolt steel being ground off. And it took about it took about five minutes of going with the size three to get the pilot hole. And it took about five minutes of drilling with the size five to get about a centimeter into the bolt. Maybe even less. Maybe even less, guys. About half a centimeter in the bolt. Then on eBay, I bought these cheap things this cost four pounds something like that four or five pounds including the delivery um and i used um oh there's four, there's four sizes in there and i used the third one up to go in my five mil size the bigger one and i put this on torque setting one to give me more torque and it just slowly bit in and I thought, nah, it's the drill slowing down, it's not gonna be able to do it, then boom, it went. I also, before I soaked it, I just put some WD-40 in there to um, help um, lubricate it and out come the nut. And I am really happy because I've got to, I'm now gonna be fitting my um, Motec TPI spacers and that was stopping me from doing it i phoned around i didn't think i'd be able to do this myself phoned around a few garages and i think i don't know well basically they weren't none of them were that enthusiastic about doing it i just wanted to know how much it was going to cost me to have it drilled out and the best most of them didn't want to quote and they just said they charged per hour you know and I understandably because it might be a pain to get it out um but the ones that did or the one that quoted two hours labor at 120 pounds so 60 pound an hour um so 120 quid to have that drilled out. It took me 20 minutes with uh, eBay Mickey Mouse tools. And I don't even have a lifter or anything like that. So really, I know, you know, I'm not, it's not anti-garage. You, you've got a problem and you need them to do your favor and get it, get you out of the thing. But uh, I don't really want to pay 100, 120 quid. Um, so it's great. I've managed to save myself a bit of money there and, and do it myself. If it had gone wrong, I would just wouldn't have been able to get it out and I'd have got taken it to the garage anyway. So it cost me five pounds to have a go. And I always find that if you have a go, you can fix most things. Um, having the right tools helps. But Mickey Mouse tools have saved the day in this in this instance. Um, what else? I'm down to two problems remaining, two main problems remaining on my 330 Club Sport. The next problem I'm going to tackle is the airbag. Um, I was going through the paperwork. So the airbag light is on. The paperwork, there's been diagnostics done on the car and it says seat occupancy sensor required, okay, which is the thing, the little electronic flat like ribbon circuit thing that's in the seat and you put your derriere on it and it obviously makes the circuit and it knows someone's in the seat to fire the airbag off. And there's also a reading of the error codes saying error, I think 112 seat occupancy sensor. So my guess, and the passenger seat has got a little bypass dongle on a little black box unit before the actual sensor mat. Um, so I've taken the, the, the bypass dongle off. What I think I need to do is just bite the bullet and get a new occupancy sensor mat, 
which looks like it's going to be a right pain to fit. But I, I was thinking it's such a bodge, isn't it, to put a bypass on that, to trick the seat into thinking it's someone's in the seat all the time, or it's just on, or I don't know what the implications are, but the implications are improper operation of the airbag module, firing of the airbag module on the passenger side if you're tricking it. So it could go off when no one's there, or it might not go off when someone's there. That's not a good thing, so I don't think you should bodge fix things like that. Um, so I'm going to bite the bullet and get a brand new occupancy sensor and fit it. The only problem is it might not be the right solution. I'm, worried, I'm, I'm almost wondering if I could borrow Reg's passenger seat, plug that in, see if the error clears. Um, but it's so much of a ball ache pardon the French, taking the seat out of two cars and swapping them over. Mind you, it might save me a lot of money. So I suspect this occupancy sensor is going to be expensive and I don't want a second-hand one because that might be worn away as well. So, there we go. That's where I am, guys. But And then after that, I've just got the EML light on the car to sort out. I'm, I might have another go at trying to sort that. But, jeez, I don't think I've got the expertise. I haven't got the knowledge of the engine. And I don't think I've got the... I just don't have the diagnostic experience <laughs> on engines to fix this. But what I can say... I've got a good diagnostic mindset. The fact that it's intermittent to me, and I can fix it by turning the car off and turning it back on, or just by revving the car loads for about five minutes and it will go, tells me... Correct me if I'm wrong, but that tells me it's not a vacuum leak because the vacuum leak wouldn't clear like that. It would get worse, you know, it just, it'd be there all the time. So it tells me it's more sensor related, I think. But I don't think it's the oxygen sensors because there's two of them. So they're, and both of them are reading the same tier levels when the misfire occurs. The misfire is across all of the cylinders. So I would suspect it is more of an electronic issue, some sort of sensor. That's my guess. My guess could be the math. Reg is saying it's the math, John. It's the math. He doesn't know. He's guessing. It, when I take the math off, the engine idle changes and stuff like that. And the math is really clean. So I don't think it's the math, but you never know. Um, I don't think it's a vacuum leak. The intake elbows look good. Um, Vanos seals were done. CCV, I don't think so. Could be, though. Um, the Disa valve, I think, is okay. Check that out. Uh, you know, don't know. Looks like I've got good compression in the top half of that engine. You know, there's some vacuum definitely in there if I take the the oil thing off. So that's another one that I'm not too sure about. I know you guys are giving me loads of information. I was researching it loads because my aim was to buy this 330 Club Sport, fix every single problem myself, and I've nearly done that. I've nearly done it. If I could fix this engine, I've probably fixed over 50, maybe at least 30. I've, I've got a list of them all. At least 30 faults on this car. And each one of those faults would cost you like 120 quid in labor and 150 quid in parts. You know, nothing's cheap. So I'm quite proud that I've fixed them all. Well, regarding, apart from this airbag and this misfire. So anyway, guys, it's going really good. Give me any help you've got on the thing. Um, we're getting there with the club sport. I can't wait. When it all runs good, I'm going to take it for a really nice spin and maybe even get the paint done on it. I'll probably end up crashing it. <laughs> I'll see you later.